Hello and welcome to Camp Xbox. Crazy Taxi to me is synonymous with Sega in the late 90s, full of style and arcade fun. Driving fast and picking up passengers all while blasting punk rock felt so exhilarating in its short gameplay time. Crazy Taxi to me is an excellent arcade experience and so was its sequel. Yet little do people know that Crazy Taxi continued on after the Dreamcast with Crazy Taxi 3, a console exclusive release for Xbox that takes everything before it and builds upon those ideas. Today I want to look into its history, tell you how it holds up, and its lasting impact. So let's go ahead and drift right on into this review. The original Crazy Taxi, released in 1999 for arcades, was one of the best driving games of its era. It featured the exhilarating experience of picking up customers in a San Francisco-like area and delivering them to their destinations at breakneck speeds. Known for its fast-paced gameplay and iconic punk music, Crazy Taxi became a classic. Its sequel, released on the Dreamcast in 2001, maintained the same formula but shifted the setting to a New York City-themed environment, but continued the exhilarating arcade experience. Both of these games were released for the Dreamcast, however, with the discontinuation of the Dreamcast and Sega's move into third-party game development in early 2001, the fate of this franchise was uncertain. The Xbox was emerging as a new platform, and it slowly became a haven for major Sega exclusives. Notable titles such as Shenmue 2, Panzer Dragoon Orta, and House of the Dead 3 found a home on the Xbox. In early 2002, the announcement came that Crazy Taxi 3 would be an Xbox exclusive. The CEO of the developer Hitmaker, Hisao Aguchi, revealed in an interview that his initial plans for the next Crazy Taxi included online features, but this had been dropped. Additionally, they wanted a dynamic day and night cycle, which was in development, but never made it to the final release. Despite these abandoned features, the anticipation for a new Crazy Taxi was high. On July 23rd, 2002, Hitmaker and Sega released Crazy Taxi 3 High Roller only for the Xbox. While it later received ports to the arcade and PC in subsequent years, the initial release was a timed exclusive for the Xbox. And recently I played through this title and I'm eager to share my experience with you. At its core, Crazy Taxi 3 High Roller is like a collector's edition for the whole franchise up to this point. Crazy Taxi 3 High Roller offers a substantial package, featuring the new city of Glitter Oasis along with maps from the first two entries in the franchise. Impressively, all the locales have been upgraded for the original Xbox and retain their original product placements and music making it a better update to these games than some later re-releases. Despite the variety in locales, the core gameplay mechanics remain unchanged. Players select a taxi driver from a roster of characters in each city with the goal of racing around, picking up customers, and delivering them to their destinations. The primary focus is making the most cash to achieve a high score, and you can opt in for timed increments of 3, 5, or 10 minutes or play by arcade rules where you deliver customers as quickly as possible and gain extra time the faster you go. The game's core gameplay stays exhilarating. The fast-paced, hectic nature of driving through the city, drifting around curves, and seeking the best possible route makes for an absolute blast. The controls feel responsive, turns are quick, and mastering special moves adds an extra layer of excitement. The return of jumps from Crazy Taxi 2 enhances the unreal crazy feeling of the game, especially in the original map from Crazy Taxi 1 that originally did not have jumps in it. The addition of Crazy X mode introduces specific challenges, unlocking new vehicles, or the ability to play as a character in any city. While the challenges increase in difficulty, their short duration prevents them from becoming tedious. It's a more robust mode than in previous games, which were very limited with how many challenges there were. This one offers a variety of challenges, including drifts, jumps, or turbo, to achieve specific goals. Although it might not be the main attraction, it serves as a fun diversion, and the true interest lies in the arcade experience that keeps the players coming back. The experiences in the first two cities are as excellent as ever, with the San Francisco-inspired map standing out as still the best. 
The variety of terrain, including giant hills, bridges, and winding roads, provides an engaging environment. The Big Apple offers tons of tight corridors for driving, and it's perfect for showcasing drifting skills. Unfortunately, the new map, Glitter Oasis, falls a little short compared to those two, featuring mostly canyons and desert, and it honestly wasn't that appealing. But despite this, Crazy Taxi 3 maintains its addictiveness with wildly fast driving, excellent controls, and the pressure of a ticking timer. It's the type of game that makes you want to dive right back in after completing a round. Sega's prowess in delivering addictive arcade-style games is evident, and Crazy Taxi 3, with its familiar yet entertaining gameplay, continues this tradition. Graphically, let's dissect this game based on each of its locales. Starting with the first map from Crazy Taxi, the upgrade here is fantastic. There's a minimal pop-in, and the vibrant colors along with the recognizable design of the city captures the essence of California living. The inclusion of product placements like Pizza Hut and Tower Records adds life to the city. On the Xbox, it's a significant upgrade providing a solid and visually appealing experience. Moving to the Big Apple from Crazy Taxi 2, which I was never a huge fan of on the Dreamcast, the Xbox version takes a bold step by transitioning it to nighttime. Surprisingly, this alteration transforms the entire map. The striking lighting from the streetlights and the neon on the buildings adds a wonderful definition to the city streets, making it a great map to traverse. While there is some pop-in issues, they don't significantly detract from the overall aesthetic and creates a very visually appealing and themed experience. However, the newest map themed to Vegas is brimming with potential. The designs of the casinos and neon lights are impressive, and it captures the essence of Las Vegas. Unfortunately, attempting to drive on the strip results in some insane slowdown, significantly impacting the game's performance. Despite the visual potential, the sluggish performance on the strip hampers the overall look of the city. And once you leave the strip, the game runs better, but the overall visual impact is just not as strong. The map features a lot of uninteresting canyons and desert, and it gives it an uninspired rushed feel. It seems like the development team after running on a high with the previous two maps took a break and it resulted in a less engaging environment. The newest map becomes a trade-off between fast running and good looks, a choice I don't really want to have to make. Fortunately, the game remains fun on this map despite its less than optimal visual performance. It's incredibly refreshing, especially after reviewing the re-release of Crazy Taxi on the Xbox Live Arcade where they removed all of the great music, that this upgraded version on Xbox retains all of the original music. It serves as a perfect time capsule, capturing the punk edge of the game. The return of the offspring in Bad Religion is awesome, maintaining the iconic soundtrack. Additionally, there's some new punk music that blends well with the vibe of the original games. Crazy Taxi is renowned for its excellent soundtrack, and this version lives up to that expectation. The sound effects remain largely the same, with the screeches on the road sounding great, while the pedestrians can become a bit annoying, especially when they start to complain constantly about you, but it's all part of the fun. The game keeps the excellent narrator contributing to the classic Crazy Taxi audio experience that just feels right in this game. In the end, Crazy Taxi 3 High Roller, in my opinion, is the best Crazy Taxi game. While the new locale may be a bit disappointing, it still has its fun moments. The real shining star here, though, is the return of the first two maps fully upgraded for the Xbox. They play the best that they ever have, and the Big Apple looks the best that it ever has, especially with the added nighttime setting. Unlike the later re-release, it retains the excellent soundtrack and the product placement, giving it that time capsule feeling. It stands to me as the definitive version of this game. On top of that, you get the best Crazy X mode, and it's short but sweet a new map with new characters, and an all-around great time. If you enjoy arcade driving games like Crazy Taxi and haven't experienced this version of it, to me this is the best iteration, a fantastic arcade driving package. It's remarkable how top-loaded my ranking list of reviewed games on the channel is getting. While Crazy Taxi 3 claims the title of the greatest Crazy Taxi game, there are so many great experiences from this generation. On my list, it does secure the 23rd spot out of 68, I'd rather boot this up than Lynx, 
although I do think Mortal Kombat Deception has a stronger replay value. In terms of lasting impact, at the time of its release, Crazy Taxi 3 High Roller received mixed reviews. Many outlets gave it mediocre scores, often pointing out frame rate issues as a major issue and expressing dissatisfaction with the new locale. However, publications like EGM and Game Informer were notably positive, praising the arcade feel and the overall collection. The reception seemed to hinge on whether players were tired of the new map or appreciated the entire package. Unfortunately, the game didn't achieve smash hit status. Apart from a Game Boy Advance game and a PSP release, only mobile games have been released in the Crazy Taxi series since then. This game is fairly forgotten to history. It seems that for many, the series ended with Crazy Taxi 2. While there is some discussion about this game, it remains somewhat forgotten the time, and it would be great to see more mainline Crazy Taxi games. Fortunately, it looks like Sega is planning to release a brand new one soon, and I'm excited to see what it brings to the table. But that wraps it up for this review today. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like as it helps me out a lot in the algorithm. Be sure to subscribe to keep up with the retro Xbox content, and also leave some comments below with some Sega or Crazy Taxi memories. I'd love to hear from you. Also, a huge shout out to my YouTube channel members. Thank you so much for the support, and I'll see you here next time at Camp Xbox.